What's going on summoners? Welcome back to another Wild Rift video. I'm Genghis, got a little too much sun over the weekend, but today I'm going over patch 2.2a that just released. This patch brings huge game changing updates to Wild Rift from champion nerfs and buffs, system changes, and even a brand new champion. Considering it's only been two weeks since the last massive game update, the sheer volume of this patch update is kinda surprising to see. It's playing Riot's active effort to taking balance to their game. Before we begin though, our question of the day is, if you had to choose one champion to be your sibling, who would it be and why? I think I pick Ezreal because I've always wanted a little bro. Let me know yours though in the comments below and let's get into the video. All right, so let's jump into the patch overview. First and foremost, we have Ramus, who will be officially released April 22nd. He was seized alongside Katarina, so it's honestly about time that we saw the Armadillo debut on Wild Rift. Since tank items were altered for the best in the initial patch 2.2, Ramus's release synergizes perfectly with the itemization available to him. As an incredibly beefy frontline champion that relies on his zooming speed and crowd control to gank his enemies, the Ramus pick should diversify the jungle picks available in the game. His playstyle exponentially rewards stacking defensive options, with many of his abilities just straight up scaling off of armor. Dive right into the enemy squishies with Ramus's taunt and knockups to devastate them, hopefully making for more than an okay pick in the jungle. One thing that Riot has not addressed in this patch though is the toxicity currently in the game, so be sure to check out our video discussing that important topic here. But getting back into what Riot has changed, next up we'll discuss the champion balances brought in 2.2a, starting off with the buffs. The first champion buff we have is for Blitzcrank, the Rolling Golem. If you haven't been paying attention to any of our champion tier lists, you'll know that Blitzcrank has been in a very sad state. With a lack of power to follow up on his easily avoidable hook engages, the pick provides pretty little for his team, making him a less than optimal pick for the duo lane. To address this, Riot buffed his first ability, Rocket Grab, granting him an extra 20 damage for each level. The ability now deals 80, 140, 200, and 260 damage. This should reward his successful plays, allowing him to execute targets more efficiently when successfully landing a hook. In addition, the slow duration from his second ability, Overdrive, was decreased to one second from the previous 1.5. By shaving off half a second, Blitzcrank should be allowed to run more freely during the game, increasing his capability to position for a grab. And since a grab is 90% of Blitzcrank's kit, these buffs are very much appreciated. Meanwhile, all three champions from Targon, Diana, Leona, and Pantheon, are also getting buffed. According to Riot, Diana has been weak across the board. She's been outperformed by pretty much every other mid lane champion, largely in part to her weak laning phase. To accommodate for this, her base health was increased to 610 from the previous 570, a 40 health increase from level 1. This should definitely allow her to stay in lane longer, capable of taking an extra ability during trades. Her passive, Moon Silver Blade, now grants Diana bonus attack speed after each spell cast for the next three auto attacks, and the attack speed will increase depending on her level. This specific buff was moved from her third ability, Lunar Rush. This added passive allows Diana to more efficiently mix in auto attacks between each of her spell usages. By doing so, she maximizes her damage output while creating much more devastating trades. The passive is actually very similar to Lee Sin's, and we all know how strong he is in the early game, so hopefully this buff will help Diana out too. But because that wasn't enough, her first ability Crescent Strike also had its cooldown reduced by 1 second per level, while her second ability Pale Cascade's cooldown was decreased from 14 seconds to the now scaling 13, 11.5, 10, and 8.5 seconds. This means across the board Dana will be able to spam her base abilities more frequently, allowing for way more lane pressure. And to add on top of these changes, cause nope, we are not done with Diana buffs, Diana's ultimate was also hit. The ability now deals more base damage at all levels of charge, with additional damage scaling more directly with AP. This will allow for more devastating all-in engages, increasing her teamfight potential. So yeah, lots of buffs to Diana, but what about the rest of the Targon crew? Well, even though Leona has been at the top of most of our tier lists, she also received a buff to her first and third abilities. Shield of Daybreak, her point and click stun, is now on a 5 second cooldown at all ranks. Zenith Blade's cooldown was decreased from 13, 12, 11, and 10 seconds to 12, 10, 8, and 6 seconds. For the early game, these buffs don't do that much, but once the game rolls into the mid to late stages, there is a stark contrast between a 10 second and a 6 second cooldown. Leona should be able to continue locking down the enemy way more often, decreasing the windows of opportunity for escape. She will truly become a crowd control spamming machine, and honestly, I am terrified for what these changes mean for the meta. Next up, we have Pantheon. Ever since the changes to his shield, which no longer grants invulnerability from turret shots, he has been underperforming. To help him become the early game giant that he's known for in League PC, Riot buffed his base attack damage from 58 to 64, scaling 3.6 per level rather than the previous 2.65. 
His first ability, Comet Spear, now deals more damage in the early game, with an additional 110% bonus AD and critical strike bonus AD ratio of 165%, but the base damage per level for the late game is still the same. This specific buff, alongside the bonus base AD, will now allow Pantheon to trade more effectively in lane, harassing with the spear and dealing more damage for auto attack. And these are essential stats for a lane bully like Pantheon, so this should help it become more relevant in the early stages of the game. Moving on from the Targon Champions, Tristana is next up. She doesn't see that much play, standing a peg or two below the top tier AD carry picks. Riot doesn't want her to become overwhelmingly powerful, so they've been implementing small, cautious buffs to ensure that they don't overtune the Yordle. Patch 2.2a's buffs are no different. Her base attack damage per level has increased from 2.65 to 3.6, while her third ability's cooldown, Explosive Charge, is set to 16, 15, 14, and 13 seconds. These buffs target her scaling potential, barely affecting her laning phase though. Riot is clearly hoping that the AD scaling will allow her late game power spike to be substantial enough to stand out in the meta, but only time will actually tell if this buff is enough. Now before moving on to the nerfs that we saw in this patch, I want to remind everybody to go join a community discord. We got a link in the description down below, so if you want to make some friends to play Wild Rift with, you're not going to find a better place. Now onto the nerfs, in light of sitting consistently at our overpowered picks, Alistair is once again receiving some tuning. Pulverize was nerfed on patch 2.2, and now Headbutt's damage is also being reduced in patch 2.2a. The skill now deals 50, 120, 190, and 260 damage, with the damage on turrets being reduced to 75% from the previous 150%. For those of you who didn't know, and don't worry, I didn't either, Headbutt dealt massive damage to turrets, allowing for Alistair to be an unprecedented tower-destroying support monster. I personally think it's hilarious that I've been playing this game for this long and had no idea. This nerf should effectively decrease the total amount of damage from his signature Headbutt Pulverize combo, substantially nerfing his engage and therefore his pick potential. Without the damage necessary to win every trade, Alistair players will now have to be a bit smarter about how and when they jump in. After being the uncontested strongest tank support pick in Wild Rift, these nerfs definitely bump him down a peg or two. And with the buffs to Leona, I feel like she's probably going to rise to prominence now. Corky has just been way too happy receiving his super quick Amazon Prime packages, so Riot nerfed him to receive normal speed shipping. Hextech Munitions Package arrival rate was increased to 150 seconds from the previous 100 seconds, meaning Corky won't be able to pull off as many game-changing, enemy team-splitting engages. But of course, the Rocket Shooting Yordle still has lots of great tools in this kit that have been left unchanged, so I don't think this nerf will impact Corky that heavily. Although Riot nerfed him preemptively in patch 2.2, these were not enough to stop Dr. Mundo's rampage. By simply buying Sunfire Aegis, he becomes giga overpowered, capable of mowing down the jungle alongside the enemy team. His attack damage was decreased from 64 to 58, with HP chunked from 690 to 650, and also armor reduced from 45 to 40. Don't get me wrong, these are pretty massive nerfs to all of his essential base stats, decreasing his early game potential massively and therefore requiring him to buy more items to scale into the game. No longer will the Sunfire Age's power spike be as powerful as it was before, since now he lacks the armor, health, and damage to capitalize on that first completed item. Masochism duration was also decreased, nerfing his ability to fight for a long duration of time during the early stages of the game. As we predicted, Galio's entry to Wild Rift significantly disrupted the meta. His global map pressure, alongside his oppressive crowd control, engage, and damage all built into one champion kit have proven too strong for most champions to deal with. So Riot has nerfed his base health to 570 from 610, while slightly increasing the cooldown and nerfing the damage of his passive Colossal Smash. These nerfs target the later stages of the game, helping prevent him from becoming a teamfight monster. In addition, Winds of War, his first ability, percent HP per AP ratio, was decreased from 2% to 1.5%. He also got a hit to his Shield of Durand cooldown, as that was increased from 15, 14, 13, and 12 seconds to the pretty big 18, 17, 16, and 15 seconds with a whopping 15% decrease in AP ratio. Also, the cherry on top is Justice Punch now dashes a significantly shorter distance. These nerfs are huge, curbing a lot of the damage and AP scaling across the board. With higher cooldowns and less reliable engage distance, Galli was hit really hard in patch 2.2a. We don't think he'll be unplayable, but these nerfs really lower his pick priority. Next up, the transforming dragon jungler Shivana provides great teamfight utility through her jungle clears, objective priority, damage, and even crowd control. She's become a very strong pick, warranting some nerfs in patch 2.2a. Her base health was decreased to 610, cooldown increased on her twin bite, and flame breath maximum on hit HP damage ratio decreased to 3%. These nerfs should decrease her strength in the early game, making her squishy while slightly slowing down her clear speed. Since this beginning phase of the game is definitely her weakest, the nerfs give other junglers a clearer opening in her jungle pathing path to exploit. 
And the last nerf of the day is to yet another jungler, Vi. The brawler has been seen lots of play in all ranks, scaling into a crowd control engage heavy monster. Her base armor was decreased to 30, and her ultimate's cooldown was increased by 10 seconds for each level. Though the nerfs are kinda small, unaffecting her core playstyle, these changes slightly increase the risk of playing her. So those were all the champion updates from patch 2.2a, now leading us into the item changes. First up, Infinity Orb has been too strong of an item, especially on execution-reliant AP champions like Katarina. I'm sure all of you players have seen a Katarina, or any AP champion, build the item and simply snowball out of control from too early on. To help prevent this early power spike, Riot is nerfing the item by adding an extra 300 gold cost, so now costing 3150 gold from the previous 2850. This should definitely help delay those snowballs, giving other players time to scale up and contest the roaming AP champions, rather than simply getting bullied and executed over and over again. And the next item change is Sunfire Aegis. Riot stated that the item is not drastically overpowered, except for when built on Dr. Mundo. So the base damage from Sunfire Aegis has been decreased from the range of 16 to 30 to the new 16 to 25, with the bonus damage HP ratio decreased from 1% to 0.8%. This is a small nerf in an attempt to allow more first item choices for tanks to see play. Especially with a vast amount of tank items that were buffed and added to the game, there are many underrated tank items that Sunfire Aegis has just simply outshined. Oh, also Glorious Enchant will now display its gold value of 500 gold, rather than the glitched 800 gold that it showed before. That's a small one, but hey, it's nice. Moving on to the game system changes, once again turrets are being buffed during the early stages of the game to help solidify a proper laning phase. In competitive play, there's just way too many instances of early grouping making a laning phase almost non-existent. So the buffs to turrets from patch 2.2 have been increased to 4 minutes rather than the initial 3, gaining additional defensive stats, scaling with more nearby enemy champions. The numbers are shown on the screen, and simply mean that they're harder to push down with sheer numbers. Moving on to the new launched skins, the Stargazer skins make their shiny debut. Some of the early unique skins to Wild Rift, Stargazer Camille, Stargazer Soraka, and Stargazer Twisted Fate are sure to dazzle. To celebrate the launch of the skin line, an in-game event introduces you to the world of the Stargazers. Complete missions to unlock blue motes and accessories throughout the event. Okay, next we got Molten Ramus, which is basically just Ramus on fire. Oh, okay. Sweeper Ramus, also known as Football Ramus, rolls onto the Wild Rift. And here's a few free-to-play champion rotations. Overall, the champion adjustments were all very well attuned to the specific strengths and weaknesses of certain champs, showing that Riot has a clear understanding and boldness in the balancing of their game. I'm excited to see what exactly these changes will mean for the meta, and if you are too, then come join our community Discord and talk about it. Also, shout out to Dez who put Nate's hair on my head and made it an emote. Kind of terrifying and I cannot unsee it. That's it for today, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like and sub, but most importantly as always, best of luck on the Rift. Stay hydrated and I'll see you next time. Also, maybe don't get this much sun, because it kind of hurts now. Get aloe vera if you do. I should get that.